I just finished picking up some groceries for the week from the grocery store and so I'm just gonna kind of take you guys along this week and show you some of the meals that I'm making with them we have a lot going on outside we're gonna get a few garden projects done this week that I'm so excited about and so I know we're gonna be spending a lot of time outside and it's gonna be hot and so I'm just gonna want easy meals to throw together for the family and I just wanted to go ahead and stock the fridge this week and kind of get everything ready so we can just focus on what's going on outside and get all that taken care of this week. So this week I picked up some pantry staples from Sprouts Farmer's Market, which is just a health food grocery store, but they have pretty decent prices. And I picked up some Vidalia onions, organic tortilla chips. I picked up some chai tea because I love doing chai tea lattes, a few canned beans and tomatoes just to keep in the pantry olive tapenade just for snacking. I love olives and then some salsa. And then I also picked up a few snacky items, which are these amazing little beef jerky sausages. They're called Dukes. They're amazing. My kids got some dried mango because they love to snack on that and just maple syrup, a couple bottles of kombucha because they were finally on sale and I try to only buy them when they're on sale. So I picked up two of those. I picked up a peach and a guava and let me tell you the peach ones are by far my favorite kombuchas. They're so great. I also picked up some organic unbleached flour, some grass fed kefir, some European Greek yogurt. A little bit of good culture sour cream. I try to really stick to good quality dairy products and so I got some of those. I also pick up raw milk sometimes at the farmer's market but not every single week. Sometimes I just grab it from the grocery store. And then I had a couple blocks of cheddar cheese, some cultured pickles, and two different kinds of organic potatoes. Okay, so today we're just having kind of a last minute dinner and so I'm just using some of these organic russet potatoes that I bought from the store and I'm gonna bake them really quickly in the air fryer just on bake about 400, 425 and I'm gonna drizzle it with a whole bunch of avocado oil and then I'm gonna sprinkle them at the end with some Celtic salt and then I'm also gonna do something which I haven't done before but my kids like love Cajun fries from fast food places which is really unhealthy, that's why I'm making them homemade. But I grabbed just a little bit of Cajun seasoning from the store and at the end, after I bake all of those, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that seasoning on at the end. So after me and Serafima put all of the potatoes into little wedges, we went ahead and put those on parchment lined baking sheets and I dri drizzled them pretty heavily with avocado oil. I like to use this for roasting and baking at a higher temperature because it has a higher smoke point. So I did a good amount of that and then we just tossed it with our hands and got it into the air fryer. We used quite a bit of potatoes for those two sheet pans, but I still have several potatoes left in this first bag of potatoes. Okay, along with the fries tonight, I'm gonna make some of my red cabbage salad. I did this in one of my previous videos, so I'll put it up top here and you guys can go watch that, but we're just gonna have that on the side with these fries and have a really simple dinner. 
I love how simple and affordable this meal was. It is literally just potatoes and cabbage and it was so good. So my husband is from Pittsburgh, which I've talked about before. And up there they do these sandwiches on fresh soft bread and they do french fries on it and coleslaw. And we get this thing called a cheese sandwich and they do it with cheese melted on the fries and the coleslaw and this totally reminded me of it and so I'm definitely going to have to take some of my homemade bread that I make that's sourdough and make this with a little bit of cheese and then that cabbage slaw because it was the same kind of thing as a Pittsburgh style sandwich so we love this meal definitely making it again and I think I'm going to make the sandwich variation it was really tasty and after they came out of the oven and were nice and crispy I just sprinkled on a little bit of that Cajun seasoning and a little pinch of my regular salt too and it just tasted so good it was just like a restaurant but so much healthier and we just served that to the kids with a little bit of organic ketchup and I just ate mine on its own it was so great and just a simple meal so tonight we have church and it's gonna be right around dinner time. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get a big batch of chili made up. So I've got about two pounds of my grass-fed ground beef and then I have this huge bucket of tomatoes and peppers that came out of the garden. And I've discovered lately that putting fresh tomatoes from my garden, the big heirloom ones, they make chili or even soups, but chili in particular, absolutely amazing. The juicy sweet tomatoes versus like a canned tomato just like change the entire dish. So I'm super excited to make chili with these tomatoes again. So I'm gonna do that. And I think I'm gonna put it in my instant pot so we can eat chili before we go to church. And then if any of the kids are still hungry after we come home from church, then they can have some more and it can just sit on the counter um, on warm mode. I love doing that because then you can cook once and then just leave it. It throughout the day and it just sits and gets better and better and it stays the perfect temperature for serving so anyone can just walk in the kitchen and grab another helping and it just keeps everybody fed everybody happy and it's minimal effort So first I need to get my instant pot going on saute mode. That way I can get my ground beef in there and get it browned. And so I'm just gonna take the two packages I picked up from my local farm when I bought some meat in bulk. I keep this in my freezer and I love just having tons of basic meat cuts on hand like ground beef or chicken thighs, pork chops, bacon, pork sausage, all that kind of stuff. I use it all the time. So I'm just putting in my ground beef into the instant pot and breaking that up with my wooden spoon. And then after that's already in there and going, then I like to start on my vegetables. So I'm taking one of my sweet Vidalia onions and just dicing that up. And I'm also gonna do the same thing with some of the peppers from my garden. Here I'm using one of the beautiful little purple peppers from my garden. I love these. They have really thin skin and just like this beautiful purple flesh or purple skin too. <laughs> they have green flesh. Anyway, so they're so beautiful and they're super tender. So I love putting it in things like soups and chilies. So I just dice this up nice and finely. It's just a sweet pepper. There's no heat whatsoever. So I'm just gonna put that in along with it. I love to really bulk my meals up with veggies. It makes the meat go further, makes it more filling. And I just feel really good about serving tons of vegetables to my family. Especially when having so many little kids in the house, I feel like the more veggies I feed them now, it's just gonna set them up later to have really good taste buds that wanna eat tons of fruits and vegetables and the things that are actually good for their bodies. And so I always like to add things when I can. If you grow these kinds of peppers in your garden, make sure that before you put them in a dish, you taste them because occasionally they will be super spicy out of nowhere. So we're gonna take a little bite of each of these before we put it in to make sure that it's not too spicy for the kids. Is it, is it spicy? Here, can I taste it? Spicy? No, good. Is this spicy? spicy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's good. All right. We're putting in these three peppers. Yeah, those are good. And I'm going to put in some of these tomatoes. And if they have little spots on them, I just cut them off. And usually the rest of them are just fine. Let's do the peppers first so they can saute a little bit with the onion. Yes. 
So now that I have all my onions and peppers sauteing in there, now I'm gonna go ahead and dice up my tomatoes and I actually like to leave some of them really chunky and then some I'll do a little bit more fine, but I love having that big bite of juicy tomato in there. I'm also gonna put in two cans of organic red kidney beans and then I forgot I have this crushed tomatoes in my pantry that's just gonna kind of work as tomato sauce. So I kind of have my diced tomatoes and tomato sauce. So I'm gonna put all this in along with plenty of spices. And I also like to do just a little bit of sugar or brown sugar to kind of balance out all the acidity from all the tomatoes. It's so funny to me how life changes because growing up we always used the little seasoning packets of chili seasoning and meatloaf seasoning that you get from the grocery store and now I just think it's so funny because it's so easy to make that kind of seasoning on your own. So I just do garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, cumin, and then like I said that pinch of sugar just like balances it all out and that is all you need. You don't need any sort of fancy seasonings for this. It's super basic but it will taste like the best chili I promise. So if you're intimidated by making your own spice mixes don't be just throw it in there until it tastes just how you like it. I let all my spices cook in there for just a second to kind of get them to turn into a kind of paste and now I'm going to add in a good amount of these crushed tomatoes maybe not the whole thing I'm just going to kind of test it and then I'll add more if I need it but I'm also going to add in these two cans of beans and I drained a little bit of liquid from one of the cans but I'm going to keep all the liquid on one of them. So we'll add that in. I don't like it to be too saucy, but I definitely want some juice so that can simmer for a while and all the liquid doesn't evaporate. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest of these tomatoes. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now for my secret ingredient, I'm gonna add some of my raw turbinado sugar. Just maybe one or two tablespoons, not much, but the molasses hint that this has just brings this chili together. It makes it so different than any other chilies that are too savory. I love the balance this gives. And let's give it a taste and check it for the seasonings. Oh, here, let's put on slow cook there. salt but other than that we're good so I'm gonna let this slow cook for a few hours and then it'll be ready to go for dinner tonight Tonight we're having another super rustic and easy meal. So we're using the rest of those potatoes along with some of our sweet potatoes and ground beef, onion, chicken broth, and then just some garlic, paprika, salt and pepper. And this is gonna be a really easy crock pot meal. I've never made it before and I'm so excited. I think it's gonna be great. I'm also gonna use a little bit of cheese in there and throw in a little bit of cream. And I just wanted to show you guys, I'm using the Material Kitchen um, vegetable peeler. It's called the Forever Peeler because it has replaced blades on it and let me tell you it is so great this is the best vegetable peeler I've ever used and I have had like the KitchenAid one I've gone through tons in my years of cooking and this is by far my favorite one so I'm gonna leave a link down below they let me have an affiliate link for you guys so you can grab that down below I'm a huge fan I use material kitchen cutting boards and knives they're amazing so highly recommend checking it out I got the one that I think is called it's the copper one I'll have to leave my exact one down below because I know they have like three different colors so to get this dinner started, I'm just taking some of my ground beef and I'm putting that in my cast iron skillet and getting that browned. And then I'm going to work on peeling my 
potatoes. I've got yellow potatoes and I've got sweet potatoes. And I'm just going to peel the skins off of both of these because since they are going in the crock pot, you want to make sure that they can soften really easily. So I'm just going to peel those up. And then I have a whole block of cheese that I grated, which you could use just half of it. You don't even have to use a whole block, but I like to grate it all at once. And then I can put the rest of it in the fridge in a Tupperware or something if I don't need it all in the recipe. So I'm just gonna dice my potatoes about a quarter of an inch thick. And I could have done the sweet potatoes even thicker because they tend to want to break down more than the yellow potatoes do. So you could do those a little thicker if you're using both. But if you're just using yellow potatoes or russet potatoes, you can do those a little thinner because they hold up pretty well in the crock pot. So I told you guys this meal was so simple. So I just sliced up all my potatoes and then I sliced an onion too. Not too thin, but not too thick. I just kind of did it a medium size. And then I'm gonna make a little spice mix that I'm gonna sprinkle over everything once it's kind of layered up in the crock pot. So I'm doing about, I think one teaspoon of paprika and then I'm gonna do the same amount of garlic powder. And I'm gonna have the recipe linked down below for you guys. And then I'm also gonna put in some salt and some pepper and I'm out of my Celtic sea salt. I have not been able to get my hands on it it's been out of stock everywhere so I'm using this one right now it's the big flaky salt and it has a really good taste so I'm just going to add that into the mix mix it up and then this will be sprinkled on top of our potatoes What you're gonna do is you're gonna start by sprinkling half of your potatoes into the crock pot and then you're gonna layer that with some of your onions and then you're gonna layer in a little bit of your beef and the seasoning and then you're gonna just repeat that and have two different layers going. Just it helps it cook a little bit better and it gets the flavors distributed in the crock pot. Once I layered everything up, I took my bottle of chicken broth and I just drizzled most of that over it. And then this is optional. I didn't follow the recipe, but I decided I wanted to put a little bit of milk in there just to help it be creamy. And it's as simple as that. So then I just put it in the slow cooker and I let it cook for a long time and it was ready for dinner that night and it was amazing. I really enjoyed this recipe and it was so easy. I'll definitely make it again for this fall. So once I had dinner going in the crock pot and that was all ready to go, I went ahead and started on lunch. So I had a lot of time to spend in the kitchen today so I could just kind of do whatever while my kids were hanging out and doing stuff in the yard. And so I went ahead and I took a butternut squash and I'm so tired just from mom life and I started peeling my butternut squash and then forgot what I was doing because I didn't even want to peel it. So I stopped peeling it then <laughs> and then I just scooped the seeds out and cubed it up because that's all I was trying to do. I just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing at the time. So you don't actually have to peel this. I'm just, I peeled some of it and then just took the seeds out and I'm just gonna cube this up and get this onto my baking sheet and season it up with my garlic powder and my paprika, salt and pepper, just like I did for the sweet potatoes and potatoes in the crock pot. And so I'm gonna do the same seasoning and 
I'm going to do a little bit of onion and I'm going to get these in the air fryer and just do some really nice roasted butternut squash. And I'm actually growing a ton of these in the garden right now. We counted and I think we have about 22 of them growing. This is definitely something I'm going to be eating all fall long. So if you think you're not a fan of butternut squash, I'm going to show you guys tons of different ways to cook it. So maybe you'll actually love it. It's just really a lighter version of kind of like a potato. Like it reminds me of a sweet potato, but it's a lighter version. So I love that. I love making soups. I'll do like butternut squash noodles even like a spaghetti squash but it's butternut squash instead that's delicious there's just so many different things you can do with such a simple vegetable and it's so hearty I mean you can buy a three dollar butternut squash and feed your whole family so it's incredible and it's great for you and so simple to make. So I'm just cubing these up and getting them in my bowl and then we're gonna season them, drizzle them with avocado oil and yeah, it's just a delicious little fall-esque meal. So this is just gonna be a really easy sheet pan lunch today. So I'm gonna use this pork bratwurst from the farm and I'm gonna put that on the baking sheet with that cubed up butternut squash. And this is just gonna all roast together in the oven. And this is an amazing brat. I love this because the skin is really thin. A lot of times from the grocery store, you'll find that there's like hard bits in it or it's hard to chew. So if you can get some locally, it'll probably be really, really good. And I got this for an amazing price too. It wasn't any more expensive than the grocery store. So I just put all of that butternut squash around there and it's just going to roast together and the juices from the bratwurst are going to kind of ooze out onto it and give it tons of like meaty flavor. And then I cut off the end of a bulb of garlic and I'm drizzling that with avocado oil and sprinkling a little bit of salt on it and it's going to make a roasted garlic paste that after it's done roasting I can squeeze that roasted garlic out onto all these veggies and it's just an amazing way to add that roasted garlic flavor without all the little bits that tend to get burned in the oven. So that's kind of a little trick. Thank you. And to go with the sheet pan lunch, I also decided to make a little bit of yellow rice, just a quick easy side to have with it. So I got some water out of the Berkey and put that in my pot to boil. And then I'm just gonna add in the rest of that chicken broth from my crock pot meal that I didn't use. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that in with the rice water to make the rice more flavorful. And I'm always looking for ways to make things more flavorful or more healthy or add in more vegetables to it. So I'm gonna add this rice to the pot and after it's simmered for a while, I'm gonna add in one or two of my tomatoes from the garden. I'm gonna dice these up and just add them into the pot and we'll just have like little chunks of tomatoes, almost like a Mexican rice or something like that. And it just adds another element, another flavor profile. And I love just the freshness that it brings to the dish. So. I'm going to go ahead and dice these up pretty finely, not too chunky, but just throw those in and it just adds a nice little twist to regular rice. And you could do this with brown rice or white rice or anything like that. You can just add in a vegetable to it. You could add peas, carrots, tomatoes, spinach, anything like that. Just add it in, especially the ones that aren't seasoned because they're going to taste the best.
since I was just kind of batch cooking today, I decided that while my rice was going to finish cooking, that I was going to go ahead and use up some of our fresh tomatoes and make a pico de gallo salsa type of dish. And so I went ahead and I just rinsed up all my tomatoes and I chopped them pretty finely. I diced them up and then diced up an onion. And I'm just going to kind of make a makeshift salsa. And I didn't have any limes. I actually forgot. So I had to go to the grocery store after this and go pick it up. But this is definitely a great snack to have on hand, either with just organic tortilla chips or I can put it on my scrambled eggs in the morning. I love just a big bowl of fresh salsa kept in the fridge will definitely go through it so I went ahead and used about six big tomatoes so this was quite a big batch and for that amount I just used one sweet onion and that was good so I'm just going to dice these up and the more it sits in the fridge the better tasting it gets so this is a great thing to prep ahead of time After the bratwurst and butternut squash were all roasted up nicely, I'm just taking that garlic bulb that we had in there and just using a fork and scooping it out. And it is so soft and sweet. I could literally just eat it with a fork. It's delicious and mild and creamy. And I'm just kind of taking it and just smearing it over my vegetables. And it gives it this amazing garlic flavor that just is so special. It adds a ton of flavor in a really healthy way. After lunch, I just finished seasoning up my pico de gallo with a little bit of cumin, some garlic powder, salt and pepper, and I just stirred that all up and left it to sit in the fridge. And it was a great afternoon snack and great for breakfast the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. 